Please stand for the reading of God's holy word. And our scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Chronicles chapter 16, and I will be reading verse 34 from the New King James Version. If everyone is there, would you please say amen? Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You may be seated. My subject for this morning is give thanks. And we've spent our morning to some degree giving thanks to God for all that he has done for us. But we just don't have enough time to give him thanks in everything. But we do thank him and Thanksgiving sometimes reminds me of the comic strip about Snoopy. Anybody know who Snoopy is? Yes. Okay. It's Thanksgiving Day and the aroma of roast turkey filled Charlie Brown's house. And Snoopy was outside lying on top of his doghouse and he smelled the aroma of roast turkey. And he's thinking it's Thanksgiving Day. Everybody eats turkey on Thanksgiving Day. And so he lies there watching the back door eagerly awaiting his Thanksgiving dinner. Finally, the door opens and here comes Charlie Brown with a bowl of dog food and he puts it on the ground. Snoopy gets off his house and he stares at the dog food with a deprived look on his face. And he thinks, do you mean just because I'm a dog, I have to eat dog food on Thanksgiving Day? <laughs> then Snoopy, looking at the dog food a little more intently, begins to think. It could be worse. I could be the turkey. <laughs> Most of us take a great deal in life for granted. Most of us complain more than we thank. Most of us are often more displeased with something than we are grateful for something. Most of us live out of our abundance and not our need. And most of us are far less thankful than we should be. And yet in everything we do, we should give thanks. We should give thanks to the Lord because everything depends on God, not us. In giving thanks to the Lord, the entire emphasis should be on God and what He has done for us. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. And true worshipers do give thanks. But all people are to give thanks to the Lord because we all have so much to be thankful for. But have you ever thought about what Thanksgiving means to you? Have you ever considered all that you have to be grateful for? And have you ever expressed this gratitude to God? Because Thanksgiving means gratitude, especially gratitude toward God. It's thankfulness. It's giving thanks of God and it's giving thanks to God for a gift or action he has bestowed upon you. And there are four elements of true thanksgiving. Remembering what God has done. Telling others about what God has done. Showing God's glory to others. And offering gifts of self, time, and resources. And if you're truly thankful, your life will show it. And giving thanks is an important element of Christian worship that's to be expressed in everyday life as well as doing worship services. This means that we give thanks to God for hearing our prayers and we give thanks to God for answering our prayers. We are to give thanks in all things. We are to thank God for what he has already done and we are to thank God for what he's going to do. But how can we give thanks to God for the terrible trials we go through? Trials such as accidents and death and sin and, and health. And the answer, of course, is we can't. This 
this is not what scripture means. What God means is that we are to thank him for his presence and power as we walk through the trials. And the optimal word is through. Because when we're in Christ Jesus, the victory and, and the triumph, there's victory and triumph over all the trials of life, no matter how terrible they are. Therefore, as we walk through the trials of life, we are to give thanks in everything, not for everything. Giving thanks to God for the victory he has given us through Christ Jesus. But let me ask you this. Have you ever wondered why there's only one day for Thanksgiving? Well, let me tell you what I think. Because I think we're somewhat mixed up. I believe that instead of having just one day of Thanksgiving each year, we should have 364 days of Thanksgiving using that one day of Thanksgiving that has already been set aside for Thanksgiving as a day just for complaining and griping. And then use the other 364 days to thank God each day for the many blessings he has so richly bestowed upon us. And God places a high emphasis on being thankful, and so should we. But it isn't what we say about our blessing, but how we use them. Because it's how we use our blessings that's the true measure of our thanksgiving. But let's look at thanksgiving another way. A small group of people were asked, if you had the power to recreate yourself, what would you leave unchanged? And this question silenced the conversations within that small group. For a moment, everybody quietly considered the possibilities. Finally, Tom, a former alcoholic, spoke and he said very thoughtfully, if I changed everything else, it might mean that I never would have met Jesus, and I don't want to take that chance. And one by one, the other members of the group agreed with him. The one thing that they would not change showed them what they were most thankful for. Each member of the group could thank the Lord for houses, cars, and plenty of food. They could thank God for spouses and the love of family, but given the opportunity to keep one thing, they chose to hang on to Jesus. In this season of Thanksgiving, let's focus on the many good things that we have to be thankful for and give thanks. And don't forget God's greatest gift, the gift of his son Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15 says, Now thanks be to God for his gift, precious, beyond telling, his indescribable, inexpressible free gift. The Apostle Paul commended the church at Corinth for their generosity, which caused the overflowing of thanks to the Lord. And this should force all of us to be thankful for the greatest giver of all, God himself. Because without the greatest giver, we could never have the greatest gift, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So thanks be to God for his gift, his indescribable gift. And the motive for giving thanks to God is to praise him. It's for his unspeakable, indescribable, inexpressible free gift. Because the greatest gift ever given was God's gift to the world, the gift of his own son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And no greater gift could ever be given. And God has given the supreme gift. But oftentimes as we sit down at our Thanksgiving table, we often reflect on what's been taken away from us and on what can be salvaged. And this is the kind of holiday we need right now. A basic and essential one, a complicated one. The kind of holiday that comes at the end of a bitter harvest and yet we find something sweet and wonderful to celebrate. CNN took a poll and it suggests that 75% of Americans say that they will be more appreciative this year than the previous Thanksgivings and many people will use this time around the Thanksgiving table to rebuild relationships that have been damaged by disagreements and disappointments. Others will use this holiday time to reflect on the goodness of a God that they have previously doubted and the context of this Thanksgiving may be one of sorrow and fear yet it's marked by 
by renewed hope and greater resolve, bringing many disagreements and disappointments to an end. In many ways, America's Thanksgiving reflects the words of the Old Testament prophet Habakkuk. And though he lived in perilous times and feared the future, the prophet thanked God. He realized that we should he realized, as we should, that true thanksgiving finds its roots in the God of heaven rather than in his many gifts. Habakkuk wrote, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails, and the field produces no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. When we observe Thanksgiving, let's give thanks by counting it all joy. Count your blessings instead of your crosses. Count your gains instead of your losses. Count your joys instead of your woes. Count your friends instead of your foes. Count your smiles instead of your tears. Count your courage instead of your fears. Count your full years instead of your lean. Count your kind deeds instead of your mean. Count your health instead of your wealth. Count on God instead of yourself. And thanksgiving is the harvest of the heart after the fruit and grain are stored away. Thanksgiving is the quiet season of remembering the moment when we pause to praise and pray, giving thanks to God. Thanksgiving is gratitude directed toward God, making your sacrifices and offerings to God, not grudgingly, but with thanksgiving. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Look at the pattern this verse sets. Give thanks. But who are you giving thanks to? You give thanks to the Lord. What are you giving thanks to the Lord for? You give thanks for God's goodness. Give thanks for God's mercy. Giving thanks to God is an act of humbling ourselves before God and showing gratitude toward God for his bountiful blessings. When we confess the name of God, we're telling all that he has done for us. When we confess our sins to God, we're telling all we've done against God. And both take tremendous courage and humility. Give thanks to the Lord because it isn't enough to just be thankful. We need to be thankful to the right person. We need to offer our thanks to the Lord because he's the only one who's worthy of our praise and thanksgiving. Hallelujah, somebody. The Lord is the one who made all things. The Lord is the one who made humanity in his image. And the Lord Yahweh who declared his name to Moses at the burning bush is the same God who called Abram to leave his home for the promised land. This is the same God who led the Israelites across dry land. This is the same God who told Noah to build an ark. And this is the same God who sent Jesus to be our Savior. Hallelujah. That's why why we need to thank God. We need to thank God for his power, for his person, for his provision. We need to thank God for his protection, for his presence, and for his pardon. We just need to give thanks to God because he is good. And 1 Chronicles 16, 34, the A portion says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. When we say that God is good, it just doesn't seem to be good enough. Amen. And so I checked out good in the dictionary. And there's good reason we're confused because there are so many definitions of good. Amen. But the Bible is primarily concerned with the moral aspects of goodness. Amen. A high standard of moral quality. Yes. In essence,
goodness. Goodness can be summed up to equate with our understanding that God is holy. Amen. God is good in his character. And so good first describes the very character of God. The truth is God is good. Yes. It's part of who he is. And God can't be anything but good. Yes. And God is the standard of goodness. Yes. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 4 says, Since everything God created is good, we should not reject any of it, but receive it with thanksgiving. God is good in his conduct. And because God is good, all that he does must also be good. Give thanks because God is good in his care. And the fact that God cares for us is amazing. And he cares for us so much that he can't leave us as we were when he found us. Because the desire of God is to make us like his son Jesus. We can't make ourselves good, but God can. God's grace can change our hearts, causing goodness to grow in us. And God desires for us to be good because he's good. And he wants us to be like him. Give thanks to the Lord because he loves us. And the B portion of 1 Chronicles 16 verse 34 says, For his mercy endures forever. There will never be a time in your life when God does not love you. Amen. And the ultimate example of this love is in the new covenant that was established through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. God loves us to the ultimate extreme. And not only does he love us that much, but he also loves us with a love that endures through all time. This means that God's love never fades. It never fails. And his love endures through all things for all time. And I want you to think about this for a moment because there has never been a time and there never will be a time when God doesn't love you. God's love endures the times that we've rejected him. Give thanks. God's love endures the times when we've rebelled against him. Give thanks. God's love endures the cost of our redemption. Give thanks. Thank God that he loves us even when we don't love him. Thank God that he loves us even when we don't love ourselves. Thank God that he loves us even when we think we're unlovable. God's love endures through all time for all time. Amen. Psalm 69 verses 30 to 31 says, Then I will praise God's name with singing, and I will honor him with thanksgiving. For this will please the Lord more than sacrificing cattle, more than presenting a bull with his horns and hooves. The psalmist valued a song of thanksgiving more than sacrifice. David employed Levites to commemorate the Lord God of Israel and to give him thanks and praise. And our religious journey and church worship is characterized by thanksgiving. And we express our thankfulness for personal and national deliverance. We express our thankfulness for God's faithfulness to the covenant and we express our thankfulness for forgiveness. And every person that's a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ should join together offering thanks to God. Because thanksgiving is a natural element of Christian worship. And thanksgiving is to characterize our Christian life. We are to just be thankful. Amen. Colossians chapter 2 verse 7 says, Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. As Christians, we should express thanks to God for Christ's healing ministry because he is our healer. As believers, we should express thanks to God for Christ's deliverance from sin because he's our redeemer. As believers, we should express thanks to God for his indescribable gift of grace in Christ and for the faith of fellow Christians. In Romans chapter 1 verse 8, Paul said, Let me say first that I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith in him is being talked about all over the world. And all 
all of Paul's letters begin with the thanksgiving, with the exception of Galatians. And gratitude isn't the byproduct of a Pollyanna or an eternal optimistic existence. Gratitude is what happens to us when we sink our teeth deeply into life and we've tasted the bitter along with the sweet and the rotten along with the ripe. Only when we reject or abandon our own unsophisticated, narrow-minded preoccupation with ourselves and stop living life with a sense of entitlement and a conviction that God owes us something will we have an attitude of gratitude. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ for you. If you belong to Christ, you're to give thanks to Christ in all things, in all circumstances. And you're to thank him for his presence and power as you walk through the trials of life. Ephesians 5.20 says, And give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's in Christ Jesus that we have victory and triumph over it all, no matter how terrible it is. As we walk through it all, we thank God for the victory he has given us through Christ Jesus. Therefore, give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Just keep in mind that it's in everything that we give thanks to God, not for everything. And so as we walk through it all, let us thank God for the victory that he has given us through Christ Jesus. But I want you to notice something else that this scripture is saying. Scripture is saying that this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. But what is the will of God for you? And the will of God for you is that you give thanks in everything. Scripture says don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he has done. Make thankfulness your sacrifice to God and keep the vows you made to the Most High. And whatever you do in word or deed, whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. The true worshiper gives thanks to the Lord, but all people are to give thanks to the Lord, crying out to him for salvation. We should be committed to the Lord, continually praising him and thanking him, bearing strong witness to his wonderful works. And the wonderful works of the Lord not only include the beauty of the earth with its lush green gardens and its desolate barren deserts and its towering majestic mountains with its vast and powerful powerful oceans and with its unfathomable expanse of the sky and its celestial bodies. But it also includes the wonderful works of salvation. The most beautiful sight in all the world is that of a human soul being saved from sin. Knowing that a person has been saved from death and eternal judgment in hell should be cause for all of us to give thanks. God's marvelous work of eternal salvation is by far the greatest and most amazing scene we could ever witness. Have you all ever witnessed the life of a person that has been redeemed by Jesus Christ? Amen. It's just like scripture says, that old life is gone. A new life has begun. We are a new creature. It's for this reason, the wonderful works of God, that we are to commit ourselves to continually praise and bear strong witness to the Lord, giving him thanks in all things. Psalms 92 1 says, It's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to the Most High. Thankfulness is a conscious response that comes from looking beyond our blessings to the source. Who's our source? God himself, Jesus. As Christians, we've been forgiven. We've been saved from death. We've been made whole by the Savior. And we've been adopted as children of God. And there should be no better reason to have a grateful heart. There should be no better reason to give thanks. We're free to enjoy the abundant life the Savior has given us. And not a one of us should run off in our blessing without stopping to thank Jesus, our Redeemer. Because our worship, 
prayers, service, and our daily life ought to be saturated with giving thanks to God. In conclusion, the concept of giving thanks to God didn't originate with the pilgrims. The purpose of giving thanks is to thank God for his grace and his goodness. We give thanks that we have an eternal dwelling place with Jesus. We give thanks that the Holy Spirit dwells within us. And we give thanks that Jesus promises to dwell with us again. And thanks should be offered to God and to Christ through Christ and in the name of Christ. We give thanks on behalf of the ministers. Give thanks in private worship and public worship. Give thanks upon the completion of a great undertaking. Give thanks before taking food. Give thanks at the remembrance of God's holiness and for the goodness and mercy of God. Give thanks for the gift of Christ and for Christ's power and reign. Give thanks for the reception and effectual work of the word of God and others. Give thanks for deliverance through Christ from indwelling sin and for victory over death and the grave, for wisdom and might, for the triumph of the gospel and for the conversion of others. Give thanks for the faith and love exhibited by others, for the grace bestowed on others and for the zeal exhibited by others. Give thanks for the nearness of God's presence presence, for the appointment to the ministry, and for the willingness to offer our property and ourselves for the service of God. Give thanks for the supply of our bodily wants, and give thanks for all men. Give thanks in everything and for everything. Give thanks always, because we all have much to be thankful for. And I give thanks for each of you, and I pray that you will continually give thanks to God in all things. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's praise God for all that he has done for us and in all that we've come through. Give him thanks. Give him praise. We come to this uh, point in our worship service that may